Hello everybody, my name is Mark Eskenazi with ME Corals and welcome. We're going to spend a couple of minutes talking today about dosing pumps and the importance of dosing in a saltwater reef aquarium. Uh, many of us know that corals consume calcium and alkalinity and they need to be replenished on a daily basis, especially once you have established corals, SPS, LTS, they're going to consume it. At some point, if you don't replenish calcium and alkalinity, you will hurt your corals to the point where they could die if alkalinity drops to significantly low enough levels. So the first key is start testing. Know how much you're dropping, know how much you need to replenish on a daily basis of calcium and alkalinity. Many people start out initially dosing by hand, whether it be once a week or twice a week or even daily. A small amount, five mils, 10 mils a day. Uh, the key, first of all, is when you do dose, dose in equal quantities, especially initially, until you need to tweak if you need to tweak. But dose initially, so if you're dosing 20 mils of alkalinity, you want to dose 20 mils of calcium. And if you're dosing by hand, you run into a few problems. One, if you dose two of them together, especially in the same location, calcium and alkalinity will bind to each other and you'll lose some of that chemical and the precipitate out on your heaters, tanks, etc. glass. Not great for us. So now you've got, you got to dose twice by hand. Secondly, if you're dosing by hand, alkalinity in general, if it's a uh, sodium carbonate, has a high pH. And a high pH, if you pour too much of it into your tank at one time, meaning 10 mils in a 200 gallon tank isn't going to be a problem but that same 10 mils in a 50 gallon tank will raise the pH significantly at a quick pace immediately. And that's not necessarily good for our aquarium inhabitants. So by using a doser, we can now spread out that 20 mils a day throughout the day as we choose, be it four times a day at five mils. Hence, we're not really raising the pH or we can raise it when we want, preferably at night when our pH tends to drop. Uh, but that's alkalinity, and then you can dose your calcium be it a, as long as it's minutes apart or hours apart, or even simultaneously if they are hitting high speed spots in your sun. Now, why the dosing pump? Like I said, I'm not around my tank every day to come do two and three shots and measure out 10, 20, 30, 50 mils, and it changes weekly based upon your addition of corals, growth of corals, and most importantly, use of your test kit. Uh, at presently, I dose 70 mils per day of both calcium and alkalinity in this tank. And that could change tomorrow based on test kit results. But again, dosing equally. Now, I like to dose as frequently throughout the day as possible. I dose every hour. Meaning if I can dose three mils per hour, I'm dosing my 75 mils a day or thereabouts. And that's the way I like to do it, as opposed to at night or daytime. Everybody has their preference. And same goes now as we go to talk about dosing pumps. Everybody has their preferences. Everybody has a different need. Everybody has a different car. We all like to do things differently. So there's no right, there's no wrong. The answer is it's right if it's giving you calcium and alkalinity without raising your pH. And any way you do it works. The rest becomes simplicity. And what do I mean by simplicity? Well, when we start with dosers many years ago, most dosers had no controllers. And here's an old doser that I had from 10 years ago. And this specific doser, has no controller, you plug it in, you set it to your timer, and it would drip, whatever it drip, what its drip rate was, I forgot what this one was, 1.5, 1.7 mils per minute, and if you ran it 10 minutes, you knew what you dosed. Uh, that was old school. They worked, and they worked effectively. Taking it a notch level to fancier school, our casing got a little bit prettier in this pump. Uh, you can see that the casing inside, where the tubing goes, the way the tubings connect are a little bit differently. And this one actually has variable speed, which means for different applications, some people may use it for water changes or, or dosing, and hence your variable speed gives you that option. But with this particular pump, you run into a similar issue of uh, there's no control. So it goes to a timer, or more importantly, many of us have controllers already. It goes to your Apex, uh, the Puratec, or your, your uh, Digital Aquatics. All of them have the capability where these manual style dosing pumps with no controllers, you can plug in and now use the controllers as your controller. The positive and negative of that is, okay, I'm on my phone, I can control my dosing pump on my phone. The negative of that is, well, you used up two ports, three ports, four ports on your Apex that maybe you could have just used one with a controller. Um, the newer types of controllers that we see a lot on the market these days are like this. This one in particular has four heads and a separate controller. All right, what we see here is we see some simplicity. Instead of one 
one, one head or needing, in, in my case, calcium alkalinity, maybe for something else, three different dosers, you can do it all in one unit and you can control it with one controller. Uh, but again, not with your Apex or your digital aquatics or other controllers. So it's separate. Free, freeing up those ports, let's say, if it's four specific or you free up four ports on your uh, control. So there's pros and cons to what everyone needs. All right, some of the simplicities or important things to look for when you look for a doser is how simple are they to repair. Um, in some of the smaller manual old style pumps, this tube on the inside is replaceable. An example, this tube is it's really the only piece that wears other than the motor turning. And these tubes will inevitably need to be replaced. This one lasts me three to four years on this 10 year old pump, which probably doesn't work anymore. Uh, this other pump also has a tube that is inside here, and that tube is also replaceable by taking off this glass. And again, the dexterity or strength or thickness of that tube will let us know how long before we replace them. On this specific doser, the simplicity to repair would be that these heads all pop out and they can be replaced. So if the tube actually goes on you, and they do go after a while because it is what's wearing inside of here, and once they get an air leak in the tube, you no longer get a pressure and you lose your drip. So what happens many times is people aren't paying attention and they will run out of, let's say, alkalinity because this stopped working on them and they're not dosing. So please test often to find those mistakes and change your equipment or heads when needed. But these are all simple. They've got lights on them that turn on when you know they're running or if you're sampling them. Um, and all of these pumps work. But the key is you can't just set up a dosing pump and start putting chemicals into an aquarium. Please, 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 you're trying to put chemicals in to match the consumption rate of your aquarium. And what's being consumed is calcium and alkalinity in equal ratios. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we're testing often our alkalinity and match our calcium and alkalinity dosing of equal ratios, 20 mils, 30 mils, 50 mils a day, based on our alkalinity mostly, test calcium too. Then, if you want to dose magnesium, that's fine too, even though magnesium can be added manually as needed. But many people, since we have a forehead doser here, many people decide to maybe dose a little magnesium too. The next thing, people may decide to dose vinegar as a carbon source. We'll talk about that another day. Uh, I do do it. As well as some people might be dosing amino acids or other types of foods throughout the day. Maybe they're away on vacation and they can dose their foods that way. But at the end of the day, do your homework and don't rely on what somebody else told you is good or bad. Every system is different. Your needs for what you need for your system and how you want to apply your dosing situation is different for everybody. Do you have a controller? Do you want to use it with your controller? Do you need one that has a controller? Do you need four heads? Do you need one? How much are you really dosing a day? And most importantly, please use your test kits. Do not just turn on a dosing pump and say, my buddy said, put in 50 mils a day and that's what I'm doing. Uh, that's not the way to do it. You'll find that you'll overdose or underdose. Another thing with these dosing pumps is they're susceptible to human error. Human error, that is, is we had it on and we forgot to turn it off while we were testing it and it ran all night. It's been one of the common complaints I hear. I may have even done it myself because we come in and we say, oh, I'm just going to add it here for a couple of minutes. We run off and do something else and we let it run all night. That's why it's important to have a timer and a controller to say, just run for me for three or four minutes and you're going to get five mils or whatever it is per day and you're good that way. So the last thing I'd also say is please calibrate or check your dosing pumps. In other words, some of these dosing pumps are sold with a known ratio. I'm going to dose two mils per minute. Well, if you really do your own test and run it for 10 minutes and divide by 10, you may find that it's not dosing at its stated manufacturer number. There's some room for, let's call it a 20 or 30 percent fluctuation either way. So you may think you're dosing two mils a day, but in reality, you could be dosing three or one. So calibrate or test once or twice when you first buy your pumps and you know what you're doing. With that, I want to say most importantly, if you're going to dose, please dose high quality chemicals. Do not dose chemicals that are intended for your garden or for your driveway milk. They're full of trace metals. Use a high quality chemical such as ME coral that are high purity and low trace metals in them and your tank will thank you for you. With that, thank you Aficionado and Reef the Reef for a great time. We'll see you soon.